public is not hearing the facts, not hearing the whole story. I have the answers. I know how bad electric cars are. I know how bad solar tractors are. I know how bad solar electric is. I also know how good it is. I also know how difficult it is for me to feed just myself and my wife, even with solar power. But I have not given up hope. This is my mission. And there are examples of great movements, great leadership, great transitions when people realize they had a crisis. Um, but first we've got to realize we have the crisis instead of sugar-coated answers like 600,000 barrels a day make us Saudi America. So you've got the peak oil community, the population community, and the environmental community, and I belong to all of them. The perfect storm, the triple crisis, is the, all three of these things coming to haunt us at once. I just come from the laws of physics and, uh, and math and science and try to give an apolitical answer. This is not a right or left answer. It doesn't make a difference whether you're an R or a D or whatever. Uh, we all get our gas at the same gas station and we all have to get our 2,000 kilocalories a day of our own personal fuel. So I read more and more about it, and the more I read about it, the more disturbed I became. Until about 2003, 2004, um, I said, the world's got to know this story. No one knows this story that I put all these pieces together. I think the Great Depression will be looked back on as a, a piece of cake compared to what we're facing. There are answers. All I can do as an engineer is to find this is what we still could do. This is what we could have done. So long, I'm out of here, I'm 78 years old. I told, at least I told you. In fact, on a global basis, with the decline that is anticipated in availability of oil, we're likely to see at least a billion people facing starvation. More and more population, all need to be fed. And if the source of their food is starting to drop, going to drop critically because of energy and climate change that's going to exacerbate this gap between the supply and the demand. It's called food. Now already we see this over a third of the world. A third of the world is going hungry. People who look just at past trends say, oh, there's plenty of food, it's just a matter of distribution. But in fact, it's clear that we've gotten plenty of food through adopting unsustainable practices. Forget all the other energy, oil is the key thing. Oil is the critical thing. You can't, nothing like oil, especially for transportation, agriculture, our lifestyle, and even to access the other energy sources, and even to access other minerals and so forth. So I've built a number of vehicles and concept vehicles and solar powered tractors and uh, trying to say, hey, I'm over here, this is what we could do, but this is all we can do. Right here is the solar powered electric tractor cutting edge for the world, right here in this whole barn of this farm up on the hillside, this old geezer who's doing the work. I can take my energy directly from the sun and rejuvenate the tractor's energy and keep on going. So that makes a lot of sense, the solar power tractor. Very limited, but it's a heck of a lot better than the old-fashioned way. Oil is used in pumping irrigation water, plowing, planting, fertilizing, harvesting, transport to market, refrigeration, and cooking. So the price of oil, along with the availability of water, is the key determinant of the price of food. It's also clear that the U.S. lifestyle is excessive in terms of what the planet can support. The average American, and there's 315 million of us, and still growing, use about 24 barrels of oil per year. So, so per capita oil is a good way to, to put a moniker on the whole subject. It's the number of barrels per year per, per person. The average in the world today is not 24, it's four. China is two. Western Europe, the other developed countries, 
um, Japan, and France, Germany, are about half of our per capita rate, about 12 instead of 24. You see how we are the, we're the drivers of this crisis. It's got, America is the problem. And what is clear from the world of ecology is that the resource limitations facing the human enterprise are severe and getting worse. I've been working in the population field full time for 42 years. And had the government taken this issue seriously enough in the 1970s and 1980s, we might have avoided uh, the human suffering that we're likely to face now. And no matter what the right or left will do in Washington to say that we're going to get growth going again, or I got this vote for me, I will get the growth going in, or vote for me, I will get growth going in. Growth cannot happen. Real growth of anything of substance cannot happen without energy. And you think about that long enough, it starts to make sense. We can make a lot more babies, but they can't grow to maturity and consume, be consumers and, re and procreate without more energy to satisfy that demand. The issue is not climate change. The issue is not biodiversity loss. The issue is not peak oil. The issue is unsustainability of the human enterprise. And we are systematically destroying not only the complexity, but the volume of the web of life. So it is the large populations of green plants, particularly trees, that produce the oxygen we need to breathe. And we have deforested enough of the planet that in fact the green plants can't keep up with the carbon dioxide we're pumping into the atmosphere by burning oil and other carbon-based fuels. Here we are kind of at this tension right at the top of the, and this is going on and on, month after month, year after year. And from my observation, I don't think it can last much longer. Sooner or later, this tension is gonna break like a rubber band. And uh, the oil age, the, the end of the oil age is gonna rear its ugly head. The science of climate change with regard to population issues is very clear. They should be taking a leadership role. The problem is too many governments are bought and paid for by those with money. So it's been very difficult to get leadership by the government. As a result of that, those of us who are facing a very uncertain future really need to make a lot of noise in order to get our own governments to take these issues seriously. This is why all other major civilizations have failed because their population got out of control for their carrying capacity, the resources. So our only hope is to get this message out and get people involved from the grassroots up. Leaders aren't going to do it. They're only reflections of their constituency. If you look at the United States government, there is no agency that has sustainability in their job description. The Environmental Protection Agency has in their job description making things greener, uh, improving efficiency. The Council on Environmental Quality, similarly. But nobody has a charge of looking at, are we sustainable at our current lifestyle or some other lifestyle? And how do we get to a point that we can be sustainable uh, with regard to both energy and all other aspects of our style of life. That is critically important for the public to demand of the U.S. government because otherwise we face the likelihood that all we're doing is greening the Titanic. We need to educate people. We need to get people involved. People need to understand the criticality of what we're facing. Now there's all types of people. Some say, I don't want to hear it. It's too depressing. I don't want to go there. Or some higher power will come along and save us or the scientists will save us. We need to have a grassroots education uh, movement that will educate the people in the street who are hearing nothing but sugar-coated answers that are total lies. And I haven't given up. Engineers are problem solvers. I mean, and I like, I tackle the big problem. This is the biggest problem I ever saw in my life. Certainly, it's a problem of the end, end of civilization. And it's facing us imminently. But uh, there are answers that would at least stretch this party out for another lifetime, 50 or 100 years. So at least our kids and our grandkids could get a share of what we took for granted. And it might also give us 
a time frame to segue into a much lower energy future using our big brains and, uh, and all the technology we have, but only if we, at the same time, we voluntarily reduce the population.